Okay, hello everyone. Jessiana Seville here from Kidney Nutrition Institute. I am here during our 30 days of live with Cassandra Floyd, one of our amazing dietitians at Kidney Nutrition Institute. Cassandra, welcome. Uh, and thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, tonight, what we're going to talk about is how, how to decode your food label. There are thousands, I don't know, hundreds, yes. hundreds of thousands of options when you go in the grocery store and now with even online shopping. You have so many choices. And for some people, that can really feel overwhelming. So we want to give you a few really awesome strategies. And this is something we do with our patients as well at Kidney Nutrition Institute. It's part of, you know, knowing the tools that you have, but give you some strategies on what to look for, what to be smart about when you're looking at a food label. The reason why is because once you understand what to look for, you can go from being in that space of super scared and like, I don't know what to eat. And I'll just kind of stick with uh, green beans and chicken and rice to being really smart and suddenly having a whole world opened up of smart options. So Cassandra, tell us a little bit about, you know, if you have kidney disease and you need to get, and you want to figure out what to look for on a food label, what would you be looking for? If you have kidney disease, what are some of the big high points to look for? Uh, maybe just a quick overview and then I'll pull up a label and you can guide us through it. Okay. So if you do have kidney disease, um, one of those, the main things you want to look for is sodium. Uh, because as you are monitoring and trying to uh, work with your kidney disease, you want to monitor and watch your sodium intake. So sodium is one of the biggies. Then there are some other things that we're looking for. Um, if you have to watch your potassium intake or if you need increased potassium, you can look at the potassium on the label. And also we want to look at the ingredient list because in the ingredient list, you'll find things that um, could possibly contain phosphorus. And that's something we want to kind of avoid if you have kidney disease. Okay. So... All right. I'm going to pull up a label then of a common food. And I know you and I were talking beforehand and we're, we're like, which one is going to be, uh, which one are we going to use? Yes. And uh, you're like, man, like people love crackers. So yes. everyone loves a snack, crackers. something crunchy, <laughs> <laughs> something crunchy and crackers, you know, like they're the vehicle to put so many things on. We use them with yes. hummus, we use them with peanut butter and we use them like a lot of different amazing foods. So I pulled up a common one that a lot of people know club crackers. And I'm wondering if you can just walk us through this label as a dietitian, if this came up, where would your eyes go first? And what would a patient be looking for to know if this is a a good choice or if they should find a substitute? So one of the things that you want to look for is first start with the serving size because that helps you to control how much you're eating and to also know what this food label is giving you. So on this food label, it tells you that four crackers is a serving. So as you know that four crackers is one serving, that's what matches up with your calories and the rest of the nutrients listed on this label. So if you're watching calories, if you're trying to lose weight, um, if possibly getting ready for a transplant, you may want to be looking at how many calories you're taking in. So those four crackers would give you 70 calories. Sodium intake, like I said, that is very important. You want to make sure that you're choosing lower sodium foods. Some of your foods that are going to have labels that are in boxes can be high sodium foods. So you want to choose something that is on the lower end. And for this particular um, cracker, four crackers would provide 125 milligrams of sodium. So now, uh, like, oh, you might be going into this. So sorry if I cut you off. But so, what would you consider then low sodiums? We got, I, I mean, that serving size is so big because I've seen some products where I'm like, whoa, like I pull it up. I'm like, this is super low sodium. And then I look at the serving size. Uh, I, I, I've seen this with salsa and soy sauce. Oh, uh, yeah. Like I'll pull it open and I'll be like, wow, like this salsa only has like 20 milligrams of sodium. I'm going to tell all my patients. And I look at the serving <laughs> size and it's like half a teaspoon. Half a like, teaspoon. What, what a rip off. And most of them are in a, like a quarter cup or half 
like a quarter cup serving. So tell us though, like on sodium, uh, we have a lot of patients that are looking at the percent but ha- and, or the milligrams and they're confused about what what is low. Like how do you know a product is low or not? Or not. So if it is a single food, for example, if this is a single food and all of you, you're going to have these four crackers for a snack, you want to stay around 100 to 150 milligrams of sodium as considered a lower sodium item. If it is a meal, say, for instance, you decide um, to choose a healthy choice dinner because it's a busy night and it's the only thing that you can get in and you just got to eat. For a full meal, you want to stay between a, around five to 600 milligrams of sodium. So for a total meal, no more than about five to 600 milligrams. For a snack, between 100, and, 100 to 150. So if you were to pair this, you want to pair this with a, an additional very low sodium food because it already contains 125 milligrams of sodium for four crackers. Okay, cool. That, yeah. you know, four crackers, club crackers doesn't go very far. <laughs> yes, yes. So right. one of the other things that's actually really good for kidney health that um, is on your label that you want to look out for is fiber. And you're going to find that under total carbohydrates. So zero, as you can see. <laughs> so looking for um, looking for food items that are high and rich in fiber is very good for kidney health. Okay, and we definitely have pulled up a non-example. So people <laughs> are joining us in between, and they're like, "Hey, like, why are you recommending club crackers?" We just didn't have a lot of the components we wanted to talk about. Okay, so this one zero milligram, zero grams of fiber. Yes, you probably could find some a little bit better. Much better. And then this is an example. So if you're looking to increase your fiber, this would not be the cracker you choose because as you can see, it has zero milligrams of fiber on it. (laughs) Some of the other things is potassium, which you'll find towards the bottom. And then you always want to um, read your ingredient list. The ingredient list is a very important part of reading food labels. You want to make sure that um, your food, that your ingredient list does not contain any foods that have phosphates. And um, a quick note about the ingredient. If you're looking to decrease sugar, um, the, the ingredient that is the first top three ingredients, those are the most abundant ingredients in the product. So if you see sugar as the first ingredient and you're trying to cut back on sugar, it's probably not the product for you. So this, so club crackers, they're made basically with flour and then they put all the things that are in flour, flour, soybean oil with an additive and sugar. Yes. So maybe not. So sugar is kind of towards the the top end. Yes. Okay. And then tell us about the, uh, the phosphate additives. So in your food label, um, you will find words that start with um, either uh, additives that start with the word with the letters FOSS or in with the letter FOSS. You want to look for um, any of those. I can't quite see it. I think it says something. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I, I was trying to zoom in. It's just going foggy. But it says sodium, acid, pyrophosphate, and monocalcium phosphate. Phosphate. So yeah. this particular cracker has two phosphates in its ingredient list. So this would not necessarily be the uh, perfect cracker to choose as a healthy cracker for kidney um, health. We want to make sure we choose things that don't have those preservatives to uh, reduce bringing in those added phosphates. Okay, so this is a good example of maybe something you could find a substitute for, and there are definitely yes. substitutes for that. I'm gonna just pull up a different example real quick. Okay. Uh, something that's a little bit easier on, let's see, I was looking at it right before. So and I'm just- I- I would also suggest um, when you, if you have time 
at the grocery store. Sometimes you're rushed at the grocery store. Sometimes you have more time at the grocery store. On those days that you have time, take the time to just read food labels of different products that you are not used to buying. I love that. So just like pull something else off the shelf and look at it. Yeah. So you really find some treasures there, maybe some things that you didn't think were going to be amazing and they'll just be absolutely incredible. Yes, exactly. So I pulled up this one. Oh, it doesn't have the label on the back. Um, I'm going to just pull it down here because this is how uh, okay. I can always at least pull it up. So on this one, I'm just recap. recap. So you would have... If you're getting these little good thin crackers, which they're very, very crunchy. They're really good with hummus. Yes. You get like 38 pieces. So 38 crackers. That's a big difference than four. Yeah. <laughs> Huge difference. It's about 180. Okay. Yeah, about 180 milligrams of sodium. So it's a little bit higher than the others, but this is a pretty solid portion. Yes. Size. And these aren't mm -hmm. like, these are, you know, just a tiny bit smaller than wheat thin. So they're not like oyster cracker size. It looks like uh, we have one gram of fiber, so not tons of fiber, but it's, uh, you know, but it's there. There. And um, and then as far as ingredients go, let's see if I can pull it up. This one has whole grain yellow cornmeal, white rice flour, safflower oil, sea salt. That's yes. So, so a much more um, solid made food without the added phosphates. Without the additives. So that could be one that potentially could use. The other yeah. thing, um, and I don't know if you've seen this also, and I'm going to stop my share here. Um, I've seen also for some of our folks that are using very low protein diets, uh, yes. that they really hone in, especially on some of the grain products, those grams of protein. Because, you know, if you only have 20, 30 grams a day, it can really add up quick. Exactly. So as you are um, reading food labels, Protein, if you're on a very low protein diet, that is also something you want to focus on because protein does not, you don't just find it in animal meat or um, your plant-based beans. You will find protein it's in your grain products. So um, choosing ones that are lower in protein is a great way to go. And just being aware of how much protein is in different food items helps you to control your protein intake if you're trying to maintain a low protein diet. Yeah. To get smart with it. So, yes. Yeah. That's awesome. That's one of the biggest things we do when we're doing these very low yeah. protein diets with keto analogs is like, you can like really hone in and look at the products and you find if you're shaving like 10 or 15 grams of protein out of the diet, sometimes you just shift products. It's not like yes. massive dietary change. You're just shifting from like, this type of cracker to another type of cracker, this type of bread to another type of bread. And I think that ends up being really impactful. Yes, very impactful because then you can use those protein grams um, somewhere else that you may want them, but you can also still continue to have that grain or the pasta or things that you want to have. Cool. Okay. So in conclusion, then, uh, for those of you who've joined us later, rewind back a little bit. We went through a couple of labels to show you some hot pieces to look at uh, for every patient that we work with. This is something that we hone in on. We have them bring in some of their favorite foods, look at what the label might look at, look like, so we can make sure that the choices and everyone knows what they're actually choosing and that it's going to be in their favor. So it's something that's pretty amazing to look at. Um, cool. Well, so do you have a personal question? Do you have a favorite product at the grocery store? Oh, well, I'll say the produce section is my go-to section. I love the produce section, but I, I also like the, um, the international aisle. Oh, that is okay. another um, aisle for me because we kind of get used to our products, but I like to check out the international aisle and check out the different beans because you there are different brands and products that we don't typically always see. So I like the international aisle too. Cool. That's a good tip. If you need <laughs> something to mix it up, don't be in the same boring diet. Go check out the international aisle. Yes. Store. <laughs> good. Well, Cassandra, thanks so much for joining me today for our live. Really, really appreciate it. All and right. it uh, for all of, 
yeah, for all of you who have watched this, um, if you want to work with us at Kidney Nutrition Institute, where we work on getting personalized plans, we do a lot of high level advanced strategies. You can go to kidneynutritioninstitute.org, click on work with us. And from there, you fill out a short form, which allows us to match you with the right dietitian, get you with the right dietitian who has the, you know, the next availability, who's one has expertise in the area that you are wanting to focus on. And uh, from there, then you get to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. So definitely join us there. And thanks again, Cassandra, for joining us. And uh, we'll see everyone later. Good night. Have a great day. Good night, everyone.